Hey guys, it's Monica, welcome back. I am so sorry I went on a huge hiatus because I was figuring out life, but I'm back and I'm ready to give some high yield tips. So today's topic was actually suggested in a comment. So thank you guys so much for putting suggestions in your comments because it really does help me come up with useful content. So the topic of today's video is useful dot phrases. So this will be most applicable to Epic users. However, most EMRs will have some sort of shortcut or a way to put templated text into a field. So I still think that this video will be useful because I will be talking about generally what shortcuts are useful to have. So what is a dot phrase? In Epic, you type in a period and then the name of your dot phrase, press enter and then boom, a bunch of templated text comes up and this saves you so much time. Guys, I'm telling you, learning tools and shortcuts within an EMR is very crucial and it really is a step towards achieving work-life balance because the more efficient you are in your work, the more free time you're going to have. So I separated the dot phrases into three separate categories. Ones that are useful in both the inpatient and outpatient settings, ones that are useful in inpatient settings, and ones that are mostly useful in outpatient settings. I'm not gonna go into the content that you should put in full note templates like an HMP or discharge summary because I think those are totally separate full topics. And by the way, I do have a video specifically on how to write a good discharge summary. Today I'm gonna be focusing on short bits of text that would be useful to save as dot phrases. So first, let's talk about some general principles. When should you make a dot phrase for yourself? So situation number one, things that you're typing out almost every day. If you are typing out the same sentence for every patient every day, you are wasting time. You're wasting precious seconds that do add up to minutes. Principle number two, things that you are constantly looking up. If you are up to dating the same question, the same simple question every day, then maybe that needs to be a dot phrase. Principle number three, checklists. So if you have a checklist of things that you need to do that's standard for each patient, then that might be a useful dot phrase so that you don't forget anything. An example of this would be like a discharge checklist. Sometimes people can include this in note templates and I think you should include it in a note template, but there are situations in which this may be useful to have as a separate dot phrase. So dot phrases that are useful in both the inpatient and outpatient settings. Number one, a normal physical exam, a normal standard physical exam. So you should have already a normal physical exam in your note template, but there are certain situations where you might wanna have just the physical exam saved as a dot phrase. Like for example, if you're copying forward someone else's note and you need to put your own physical exam in there, then in this case, a dot phrase would be useful. And that way, if you have a normal physical exam, all you have to do is edit it to put in the abnormal findings. And this is also useful if you forgot to do part of an exam, the dot phrase might jog your memory and then you know to go back to the patient and do that part of the exam. Next is old cart. Yes, you heard me right. You should definitely know this off the top of your head, but we're talking in situations where you need to be efficient and also when you're so, so in a rush that you don't have time to think and it's not second nature to you yet. So sometimes even I will use this in an outpatient visit where I'm trying to like type really quickly and the patient's talking to me. I wanna remember every question I need to ask in order to make a good differential diagnosis. So I actually have old cards saved as a bullet point list. Next, lists of resources. So if a patient's always asking you, what are some mental health resources for me? Where are the lab locations? Where are the urgent cares? You can save these as a list, as a dot phrase, so that you're not constantly Googling it for a patient. You can tell the patient, hey, sure, no problem. I'm gonna put that in your discharge instructions, or I'm gonna put that in your after visit summary. And it takes you a millisecond because all you're doing is typing in a dot phrase. And then signatures. You do need to have a signature at the end of notes and attestations and at the end of messages to patients. Pro tip, you actually can put in a drawn signature and save even that as a dot phrase. So that's really useful, for example, when you're writing a letter for a patient. All right, dot phrases that are useful specifically in the inpatient setting. So first, a review of systems. So you know how when you write your subjective on a progress note, you need to include a review of systems like patient denies chest pain, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, chills, et cetera, et cetera. So actually this is required for billing purposes, but also you should be checking in on some of these symptoms for your patients. So you do need to include this in your subjective. That's why it's useful to have a dot phrase so you're not typing out the same thing every day for every patient. Just remember to edit it, of course. 
when the patient actually does have something positive in the review systems. Next is an inpatient checklist. This should be part of a note template as well, but you might wanna have a separate dot phrase in case you need to put it in afterwards. For ICU rotations, one of the common mnemonics is Fast Hugs BID, which I'll put up here. And you can save that as a dot phrase. So again, you're not having to remember all of these things because there's a good chance you're gonna forget something. Now, warning here. If you have a checklist that is a dot phrase, that doesn't mean that your eyes should just skim over it every day and not really read it. A checklist exists for a reason. So you should be going through the checklist every day for every patient. Another checklist that's useful is a discharge checklist. Discharge planning is so important in the inpatient setting. Next, plans for commonly seen diagnoses. Here's an example of a dot phrase that might be useful on a cardiology rotation. The cardiologists are concerned about all aspects of the heart. So you need to remember to consider all of them. We need to consider the coronaries. So coronary artery disease, for example. We need to consider the pump of the heart. Is there heart failure? We need to consider the rhythm of the heart. Does the patient have a history of AFib? And so remembering to address each of these components is gonna make you a more thorough doctor in a, specifically a cardiology rotation. So another example is AFib. So what all do you need to consider in an AFib patient? So you need to consider rate control, rhythm control, and anticoagulation, and that's sort of the bare bones. So having a dot phrase for that so you don't forget any of those aspects could be really useful. Another example, heart failure. A lot of these are cardiac actually, because there's so many algorithms and protocols in cardiology. So heart failure is another diagnosis where there are multiple components to consider for every patient. So for diuresis, how much of a diuretic are you giving? What's your INO goal? This is a very common thing that medical students will forget to include. GDMT, goal-directed medical therapy, and monitoring. How often are you trending their electrolytes? What are your electrolyte goals? I have seen people make dot phrases for other diagnoses, not just cardiac. So for example, hyponatremia or AKI, diagnoses that you see all the time and you're always having to think of the same workup it might be useful to have a dot phrase for those. Next is protocols like the DIC transfusion protocol. I know people are always looking this up because it's not something we use terribly often. And then discharge instructions. You definitely should have a dot phrase for this because it's so important to remember to put all the important points in the discharge instructions that are gonna go in the after visit summary that leave with the patient when they're discharged from the hospital. So this is what my dot phrase looks like. I include what the patient was admitted for and I don't make it complicated, just a brief summary. Then I'm putting what are the things that happened during your hospitalization, what are the medication changes we made, and is there anything the patient needs to do besides taking medications after they leave the hospital. It's also important to include a number that patients can call if something happens once they leave the hospital. Next, outpatient dot phrases. Oh my gosh, dot phrases are even more crucial in the outpatient setting. I am telling you, there are way too many things to remember and way too many things you're taking care of, like for in the in-basket, for example. So many things that you're typing out over and over again that if you don't use these dot phrases, you're gonna be very, very slow. So let's get to it. First, scores. So I'm talking like PHQ-9, GAT-7, Stop Bang, Chad's Fast. I mean, the list goes on. It's nice to be able to have a dot phrase for that so you insert it in your note automatically and you can go through it right there with your patient. It takes a little longer to Google, use MDCalc, and then do the score, but then if you use MDCalc, you won't have the responses to specific questions in your note. Next is checklists for chronic conditions. This is so, so useful because there are many common diagnoses out there and these diagnoses have so many things that need to be monitored over the long term. So classic example is diabetes. Here's my diabetes dot phrase. I mean, look, how can I remember this for every patient? It's too much. I have to have it in the note. Healthcare maintenance. Oh my God. Don't even get me started. I cannot remember healthcare maintenance. Like if you ask me a vaccine schedule, I'm not gonna know it. I immediately Google CDC vaccine schedule. So yes, I need a dot phrase. And thankfully Epic and a lot of EMRs do have like systems built in so that you don't forget your healthcare maintenance, but it is nice to have it in a note because then other people can see that you are thinking of it and you are taking care of it. Next is after visit instructions for common diagnoses and common medications prescribed. So for example, if you have a medication that you're prescribing very often and it needs to be taken a certain way, yes, you need to say that during the visit, 
but please put it in the after visit instructions as well because patients are going to forget. So one good example is thyroid medication. You're newly prescribing thyroid medication, so you need to put in the after visit instructions to take it on an empty stomach for common diagnoses. So for GERD, I have a set of instructions here or for hypertension if I'm adjusting someone's medications I might put the instructions here for the FODMAP diet I have a table that pops up for lists of foods that you can eat lists of foods that you should avoid pre-op instructions I could go on and on there are a million things that you can make into a dot phrase millions of things that are common that you should make into a dot phrase in order to stay efficient next is responses to frequently asked questions for patient messages they're often asking the same questions over and over and over again. So classically, during this time period, questions about COVID vaccines. We have a dot phrase that's a standard response that answers the questions that are most commonly asked. That way, I don't have to type out the same response to 30 different patients who are asking me the same thing. And that wraps up my video. I could probably think of more useful dot phrases. If I do, I might make a part two. If you have suggestions for additional dot phrases, please feel free to put them in the comments so everyone else can learn and I can learn as well. I do take suggestions very seriously, so if there's a topic that's been burning and you think would be useful for other medical students and residents, also leave that in the comments. Please like and subscribe to support my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.